You are listening to the Tenth Men podcast, where we discuss the ideas, theories, and principles to help you live a wealthy, healthy, and happy life. My name is Harish, and I'm a third-year medical student. And my name is Felix. I'm a graduate entry medical student and content creator. Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of the Tenth Men podcast. My name is Felix, and I have my co-host here, Harish. As always, say hi. Hey guys. So today we're going to be discussing one of the episodes that we teased in episode zero. It's about which thing you should optimize for, right? Whether you should optimize for discipline or motivation in your life, and to an extent, if you're a student, this is especially important because we know we struggle with this all the time. So we're going to discuss that because. I am a firm believer in motivation. I optimize my life for motivation, whereas Harish optimizes his life for discipline. So we discuss what our points are on each side. So the way the podcast will work, just as an outline, since it's the first official episode, is that we will introduce a question, we'll define the questions and the terms, and then we'll try and construct an answer and discuss, etc. We also have a few traditions that we want to put into the podcast, but you'll soon see that soon enough. So stick around to listen to what they are. Okay, so Harish, what is motivation, man? You can take that one. Well, okay, motivation to me is basically a kind of inner desire for you to achieve a goal. That means it has to come from within. You're not motivated by any external factors. I mean, by far, that is my definition of motivation because. Um, I'm not really a. I wouldn't say a firm believer, but I just believe that discipline takes precedence over motivation. So I'm not really sure about motivation, but I think Felix can give you a better explanation on the definition of motivation. I believe. Yeah. So, at the very fundamental level, right? Motivation is the process that initiates and guides and and pretty much sustains any goal oriented behavior, right? So whether it's you drinking water, you drinking coffee, or having chocolate, or reading a book, it's all driven by motivation. Now, on a scientific note, it's driven by the neurotransmitter called dopamine in your brain. And it's a very, very uh, poignant component in addiction. Now, fundamentally though at the very very basic level motivation is is what gets you to do things okay it's what enables you to get things done okay that's 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 the primary driver now there are two types of motivation or on, on the very basic level right you've got extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation extrinsic are the ones that arise from outside the individual and it involves external things right so this is where you rely on external things to give you motivations to drive towards a goal. So this includes trophies, social recognition, praise, money, uh, rewards, whatever it is, right? And you have intrinsic motivation, which arises from the individual. It comes from within you. You don't need to depend on anyone else to give it to you. It's already there. Uh, this includes reading a book, right? You're reading a book just for the pleasure uh, or completing a crossword puzzle, or whatever it is, it comes from within you. So that's pretty much a whistle-stop tour of motivation. Harish, all right, go on. Tell me what discipline is. <laughs> well, I mean, before I jump into the whole uh, definition of discipline, I have a question for you. Uh, okay, here we go. So you have said that there are two types of motivation, extrinsic and intrinsic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which one would you say is a bigger part of your life? Because I think I made myself clear in the previous statement that my definition of motivation is an inner desire. Do you believe in a similar thing? Or do you believe that extrinsic and intrinsic motivation are equally balanced in someone's life? I think, I think to an extent, we're always pulled by extrinsic motivation. You know, everyone sort of wants to have that external recognition. It's part of the fact that, you, you, you know, there's a very inner part of your brain that sort of works like a chimp. There's a really good book called The Chimp Paradox. It was written by a ex-dean of Sheffield Medical School. And it talks about that if you think of yourself or part of yourself as a chimp, you kind of do need that social recognition. You want others to like you. And it's, it's something that we always have within us. But at the same time, I think it's very wise to optimize your life around intrinsic motivations. And what I mean by that, I guess some people can call that passion, right? In that extrinsic motivation is temporary. They're very ephemeral you know, one day you may get a trophy, the other may you may not. One day you might do well in an exam, the other may you may not. But the idea is that if you're doing a course, let's say, for example, medicine or 
uh, natural sciences, whatever it is, right? And you get a bad grade you or you have a bad experience, you'll stick at it because you have the intrinsic motivation to complete the course. You know, if your only extrinsic motivation was that, no, my parents praised me to go or my parents is forcing me to go and they stop praising you the moment you get a bad grade, then it disappears and you're sort of just left with this emptiness, which is always, which is never good, right? So yeah, intrinsic motivation all the way, man. Well, I mean, um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with your answer as well. I mean, within motivation itself, I mean, even though I'm a, I wouldn't say a firm believer, I prefer discipline. In the case, I do prefer motivation. I would go for, I would opt for intrinsic motivation because as you said, like once that external, mo- you won't always have a constant supply of external motivation and the day it runs out, as you said, mm. you'll feel kind of empty. Yeah. Now, coming to discipline. So this is what I believe discipline is all about. Mm-hmm. Um, having an orderly or prescribed conduct okay. or like a pattern of behavior. Okay. Or some people, some other people might define it as, you know, forcing yourself to do something that you don't really like. Right. That's okay. the, that's a common connotation of the discipline. But my definition is that you sticking to a rigid schedule, whether whether you like it or not, doesn't matter. That that shouldn't really be a factor, but you stick to the rigid schedule no matter what day in day out. That's what I believe discipline is all about. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think. No, I agree with you. By the way, Harish, uh, he's from Singapore. So he spent some time in the army. So he knows a lot about discipline. You know, it's probably why I optimize <laughs> for it. But um, for me, discipline fundamentally is doing something you don't really want to do. I think I think that's the crux of it. For me, it's when I have to do something when I, I, I don't want to do it, but I make myself do it anyway. Now, the question then, therefore, is why do you optimize for discipline? You know, why, why do you think optimizing for discipline more than motivation is important in life? Well, okay, this is my reasoning. So I'm just speaking from personal experiences. So there are some aspects of life that you wouldn't like. So let's say I'm right now I'm doing medicine, right? Mm-hmm. And anatomy is a subject that I might not really prefer because I, I wouldn't say hate, hate is such a strong word, yeah. but anatomy is not one of my favorite subjects. So, okay, I'm not going to name specific, you know, uh, lecturers or anything. So let's say I'm learning the anatomy of the dog, yeah? Okay. I of let's say dog. I hate, yeah, yeah, just for uh, just oh, for right, the example, okay. just for the sake yeah, yeah, of okay, it. I'm not sure, going to name any sure. lecturers. <laughs> so yeah, let's say I'm learning the anatomy of the dog, yeah? yeah, and I hate genuinely hate learning the anatomy of the dog. Okay, okay, but no matter what, what I have to do is I have to wake up every day, set mm-hmm. aside one hour, and mm-hmm. then make some flashcards or whatever uh, learning method that works for me, and then study it because I know studying that anatomy no matter what will eventually get me good grades i hate the anatomy of the dog Mm -hmm. but i still have to do it because i know eventually it'll lead me to good grades so that's what i believe discipline is all about because it will eventually lead to success even though you don't like it i mean i do not know whether you agree with this theory but okay i mean you can't tell me that Uh, i'll just continue one more point Mm -hmm. so you told me you did pharmacology right so (laughs) you can't genuinely tell me that you loved okay. every single module you you went to uni and be like oh i'm in love with this module oh i'm in love with this lecture you can't be feeling that throughout the entire three years of your degree there would have been some instances you would have genuinely hated a certain lecture and what would you do to approach that for me i believe that only solution in that case is forcing yourself to sit down no matter what setting a, setting some time for it and mm-hmm. uh achieving the goal from there Okay. Okay. All right. All right. No, I think I think I've got a point. I I can't. I think I'd be lying if I said yes. I loved every minute of pharmacology. You know, I did like pharmacology. I loved my course. But the thing is that, let's say that I was in a similar predicament. Right. I had a course or I had a particular section of pharmacology that I didn't like. Okay. And this is the same with anything in life. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a doctor, for example the price of having high highs, you know, if you saved a patient, etc., is having very low lows, right? You're not going to love every part about the job. I think that just comes with most jobs. Now, in my case, right, I would say, let's say I didn't want to go to the lecture or I didn't want to, get, you know, work on this module because I wasn't, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't enjoy doing it. But for me, I don't think I required discipline, okay? And here's the way I think of it. So I think of discipline and motivation as two different fuels for the same engine, okay? 
And I'm not saying discipline is bad, right? It's important. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying motivation is better. Now, the reason is when I attend things that I don't like in pharmacology, for example, I don't think I've ever had to tap into discipline to go to a lecture that I don't like or a topic I don't like or whatever it is, right? Because when I applied for pharmacology, let's say my long-term goal, right, was to make drugs and go into industry or whatever it is, right? And I applied for that, but I also had a short-term motivation, right? And this is why I think I think what you call discipline, I call multiple sources of motivation. Because if I didn't have a lecture, I li- lecturer, uh, not lecturer, but lecture I didn't like, then I would not have to use discipline because my short-term motivation is my scientific curiosity. What that meant is that even though I wasn't spending every single day learning how to make drugs or learning how to work in industry, it didn't matter to me because every single day I was learning something new about the body, something new about how a drug responded to a body or how the body responded to the drugs, right? And that was enough to satisfy my scientific curiosity. So even when I was doing things that I guess stereotypically I wouldn't like, I never needed discipline. I, I just use motivation all the way through. You know, I think if I go and take med school as an example, and you'll see this in a lot of medical school applicants, especially now, um, if you look at the personal statement and you just lift the patterns, you'll see that there's almost always two motivations, right? So a lot of people want to save people, right? Like you want to save lives, right? That's why a lot of medics apply to medical school and become doctors. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So when you look at personal statements, they'll say that, but the whole saving lives, treating people part is five five years away, right? I, I guess you kind of help out in fourth and fifth year, right? Yeah, kind of. But the actual thing happens when you're a doctor or a surgeon or whatever. So the thing that the person is saying that they're motivated to do when they apply to medical school is five years away. But if you read a lot of the applications, you'll see this dichotomy, right? They'll they'll have this long-term motivation, but they'll also have this short-term motivation of scientific curiosity. So the idea is with your anatomy, right? Even though you may not see it as like, oh, I, I love it or something. Surely it satisfies your scientific curiosity, right? That must have been an aspect of why you apply to med school. Well, okay. I mean, that's really a good argument. I'm going to deny that. It's really a good <laughs> argument. <laughs> I mean, I do have the scientific curiosity to like constantly, you know, uh, learn. Mm-hmm. I do have that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think from what you have said, I think it eventually comes down to the mindset. Is that right? Like on yeah, how you I think it depends on how you frame it. Yeah, it's, it just depends on how you frame it. Like, uh, I think it's Seth Godin that once said, uh, he, he writes his short blogs on the websites. He said, like, there's a difference even how you say you have to do something versus you get to. Okay, now that you have said, okay, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's kind of a self-discovery for me. Uh <laughs> I'm, I'm, seriously, it was, it's kind of a self-discovery. Because, Already? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of sad. I, I thought I'm going to win this uh, in a discussion by saying, that, oh yeah, discipline will always win out. But I think he might be right because I have some certain life experiences where I tapped into my motivation and I've actually kind of achieved some certain milestones in life. Mm. So this brings me back to one of my experiences back in grade three. I mean, not grade three, oh, sec- th- secondary three. What, what am I saying? Yeah, in okay. secondary three. And uh, I was constantly failing chemistry. All level chemistry, I was constantly failing. I was barely passed and I'll be getting like 49, 50. Mm. Mm. It's, it's always around that range. And one of my mates who's sitting, always sitting beside me, he's constantly getting A's. <laughs> or he, 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 he doesn't even get a B. He's constantly getting A's. And half the time I'm talking with him, right. he also doesn't pay attention <laughs> in class. <laughs> but he ends up with A's I'm like okay is there some sort of like you know trickery to this yeah and first thing he asked me was uh, his name is Carl by the way so yeah the first thing he told me was he asked me rather was uh, do you actually like studying chemistry then I was like no I genuinely hate chemistry I mean even though right now I'm studying medicine chemistry is a requirement at that point of time (laughs) I hated chemistry and then first thing he told me was you got to change your perspective on how Mm. you view chemistry he said you got to approach it as something that you want to learn because what he told me was kind of a 
major life advice that kind of changed my life because he told me that every time you step into the school every time you attend a lesson think of it as an opportunity to gain more knowledge because people around the world do not have this privilege to gain this education and you are sitting in the classroom and you're refusing to study so how does that make you feel he just posed me these questions and i went back home thought about it not going to lie i mean it was a tough thing because what you have to do is actually change your mindset from mm. being from um, from being disciplined to motivation so mm. i was telling myself every time i picked up a chemistry all level book i'll be like okay fine mm-hmm. i'm going to learn this chapter mm-hmm. in the hope that i'm going to learn new knowledge that people around the world might not be privileged enough to learn exactly and it kind of did work out well in the end because right now i'm doing medicine so i must have done well <laughs> <Yeah>. in chemistry <laughs> So I must have done well at chemistry because I didn't do biology. So chemistry was my only subject that allowed me to get into medicine. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, thinking back in all this past life experiences, I think one thing I've realized now from talking to Felix is that I haven't been applying this mindset to all aspects of my life. I think that's my mistake rather. Mm-hmm. I've chosen specific aspects like, okay, fine, I'm just going to use this mindset just for chemistry because, you know, I want to get into medicine. <laughs> so uh, I think I should kind of change that mindset and apply it to all aspects. I think that would be a better solution, I think. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it, it, it really is just about framing. I think if you look at anatomy as one step closer to becoming a doctor, right? If you think every single day I'm learning something new, I'm able to satisfy my scientific curiosity as a short term motivation. I, I think you won't find it hard to I don't to attend these lectures or or I don't think you'll need to tap into discipline at any point. And the really good thing about motivation is that, again, the chin paradox talks about this a lot. The good thing about motivation is that motivation works with you right it works with your desire works with your wants discipline works against you because fundamentally you probably don't want to do that right so if you frame it correctly if you say i get to do anatomy i get to uh, satisfy my scientific curiosity rather than just saying you know this is not treating patients this is not doing surgeries therefore this is not what i signed up for i think if you see once one every single day as a step close to your goal it kind of works and i think i watched a interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger and he was being asked by the interviewer when you lift because he was like huge like massive when he went for Mr. Olympia right when you lift it doesn't it hurt like isn't this painful why do you keep doing it why do you keep getting bigger he was like actually it does hurt but I see every single rep you know even at that minute scale he didn't say oh I lift because I want to be Mr. Olympia he just said even at the minute scale of every single rep, he saw that as a one step closer to becoming Mr. Olympia, right? And they were like, you know, surely you'll get sick. He said it to a point where he was like, I've thrown up in the gym multiple times, right? He said something like, I'm not afraid to throw up in the gym, but I go all out because every single minute I spend in the gym is one step closer to my goal. And I think if you see yourself that way, you'll be able to do things that you with a bunch of motivation and it's not to say discipline is bad. I'm just saying motivation is a much more better, renewable and almost healthier and efficient fuel compared to discipline. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, I'm glad you agree. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. No, because I'm really psyched to say this because, uh, I've made another recent self discovery. Like while you're talking through, I've been just been reflecting on my past experience and I just made another recent self discovery. Um, Mm-hmm. I'm, I was just thinking back back about my anatomy lectures mm-hmm. and the reason why I said I didn't say I hated anatomy was because there were some aspects of anatomy I loved I'm not right. going to deny that mm-hmm. there were some aspects of the anatomy that I loved and I always associated that with like okay the lecturer is being good mm-hmm. it's like okay oh, they, this lecturer teaches anatomy really well so that's why I love anatomy mm-hmm. but now that you say about this intrinsic and extrinsic motivation Mm. it seemed at that point of time I was depending on extrinsic motivation to motivate me to learn anatomy because I was associating that okay if the lecturer is good it'll Mm. motivate me to learn anatomy Mm. but now that I've said all this I think it kind of changed my perspective on the whole thing that means I have to be intrinsically Mm. motivated that thirst for knowledge has to be always there to learn anatomy I think yeah I mean there's a clear evidence I think because before when I started I said I would opt for intrinsic motivation but now that I've said that it kind of becomes clear that intrinsic motivation trumps extrinsic after all, I think. Yeah, I think 
yeah, with motivation, I, I think you may get the idea that I turn everything into a source of motivation. I think it's actually the opposite. I only do things that I'm motivated to do. Okay, I don't see myself as an extremely disciplined person and people are surprised by this. Uh, but I just do things that I'm motivated to do. If I wake up early at 4.30 or whatever it is, right, I'm motivated to do that because I want to do things or I want to go work out in the morning. I don't need to tap into discipline for any of these, right? It's all motivation. And I find it to be much easier because I used to optimize for discipline, right? I used to be like, oh, if you don't like it, just, just get through it, right? It doesn't matter about motivation. But nowadays, I'm, I'm hypersensitive to whenever I have to tap into discipline because then I ask myself, do I really want to be doing this? Like, why am I actually doing this? Why am I not motivated to do it if I want to do it, you know? And what I find is that it's much easier, right? It's much easier to change whatever it is that you're doing that you're not motivated to do than force yourself every single day to push through it with discipline, okay? Because if you are not motivated about something, right, and you have to use discipline, if you, I think using discipline is a very temporary fix. It's like a band-aid, right? You're spending, for example, with your anatomy, you're spending one hour just going through the pain of doing anatomy, right? Whereas, mm -hmm. and, you, and you're basically just cutting off these branches. Whereas if you figure out how can I be motivated to do, do anatomy? Why am I even doing anatomy in the first place? And you're like, okay, it's because I want to be a doctor. Every single day is one step close to being a doctor. I actually like science. If I think about it this way, you know, I can actually find anatomy interesting. What you then do is you cut off this problem of demotivation at the root and it's gone forever. You know, it's not, you're not cutting off these little branches every day for an hour, but it's just gone. Mm -hmm. And you just suddenly just have all this energy to do something because you're motivated to do, right? Yeah, that no, that absolutely makes sense because now that I think back to my, you know, all my lectures and stuff, mm -hmm. I think eventually it just comes down to the fact that applying your theory, that is, there is no such thing as a favorite topic in medicine because at, at the end of the day, because you're so motivated to learn medicine that you won't actually hate any topics. Mm -hmm. because all all that you have in your mind is that okay every time i learn one lecture every time i learn a certain concept it's just one step closer towards my goal yeah that definitely makes sense yeah. i mean i didn't expect myself to you know shift sight so quickly but <laughs> i gotta agree with you. I, I i gotta agree with the felix i mean it, it does make sense i i have had experiences i think i have made the tragic mistake of not applying it mm. to all aspects of my life yeah but Fair enough. I have one more question for you. I have one more question. Okay. For you. <laughs> yeah, so right, okay, we now we have talked about I've, we have talked about discipline from like you know uh, applying it physically on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But okay, this is now more of a mental aspect. Mm -hmm. So have you heard of the term disciplined mind? Disciplined. Uh, mind. Yes, in like normal vocabulary, yeah. But is it is it is it some sort of concept? No, it's not a concept. So, okay, this is what, okay, this might slightly deviate from the topic motivation versus discipline, but I'm just trying to say this point so that to make myself clear that you need discipline in certain aspects of my life. So right. there is this guy called, there's a monk called Dandabani. Um, mm -hmm. He gave a TEDx speech recently. I mean, you can just type his name on YouTube, you can see. And then he talks about how most people in our generation mm -hmm. are actually constantly distracted. Mm-hmm. They are never able to focus mm -hmm. because our mind is always wavering. If we get a notification, we always pick up our phone immediately. We took a look at our phone. Mm -hmm. We never train our minds to focus on one thing. But here is the mm -hmm. funny thing. If you go mm -hmm. watch a movie, let's say you go watch Avengers Endgame. It's three hours long, three freaking hours long. But I can tell you for the three freaking hours, you wouldn't even step, you wouldn't even step out of the cinema for like, you know, toilet break. For the mm -hmm. three hours, you'll be like, okay, I'm going to soak in every single minute of this movie. And you'll just sit mm -hmm. there and watch. But when it comes mm -hmm. down to like, okay, now I need to do this 15,000 word or 1,500 word essay, assi essay assignment, <laughs> you would take yeah. break every 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then he comes across this point where you have to train your mind, which in my sense is discipline, to focus on a, to focus on a certain activity wouldn't you categorize mm -hmm. that as discipline? Like, for example, even for me, like, you know mm -hmm. how I said, my friend told me that uh, you need to change your uh, view on how you look at chemistry. Like, because I viewed chemistry as something that I hated, but now I love chemistry mm -hmm. because of that entire uh, mindset. But to change mm -hmm. that mindset from hate to love, mm -hmm. don't you think 
That takes discipline. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Right, no, that that's an interesting point. All right. I think there's a quote, and I, I will explain this quote. Right, I'm going to just say the quote. Yeah, go on, go on. Okay, so the quote I think is, um, I think it's from the Stormlight Archive or something like that, I'm not sure. But it says that it is that it is often the first step that is the hardest but the next step that counts okay and i'll try and explain this so mm -hmm. in regards to motivation and in regards to doing anything that's skill based right for example it could be learning mm -hmm. chemistry in your case i guess there is a certain level of discipline required for you to change gears okay mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Let's say you're there's two roads. One's discipline, one's motivation. And you're on this discipline road. It's hard to switch to motivation, right? It's it's hard to find motivation to switch to a different road. That's what you're trying to say, definitely. right? Yes, definitely. Now, my counter would be that if you are motivated, so in this case, you are clearly motivated to do well in chemistry, right? If you didn't do well in mm -hmm. chemistry, you wouldn't be at med school, right? Definitely. Obviously. So because you wanted to do well in chemistry, you were pretty much willing to do anything to become mm -hmm. better, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you were motivated to try whatever it is to become better. Mm -hmm. And I think that yeah. has led you to switch to motivation because you're like, maybe if I do this, I'll do better in chemistry. So I think mm -hmm. even that switch, even that first step, it it was just motivation, right? Even though it was hard, it probably took the most amount of motivation to jump in, right? But I still mm -hmm. think it was a motivation to change. It was a motivation to do well in chemistry that caused you to switch from discipline to motivation because you were like, if I don't do well, I'm not going to make it to med school. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, I mean, it does make sense because now I'm thinking about it. I wouldn't say it's purely motivation when it comes to changing of mental mindsets when it comes to physical activities yes i completely agree with the motivation takes precedence mm -hmm. like an off chain sites mm -hmm. but when it comes to like changing mindsets mm -hmm. i personally feel that it comes down to a bit of discipline like just a pinch of discipline okay. as well as motivation that's what i believe in because i remember myself going through that trouble of you know, changing my mindset of hating chemistry to loving chemistry mm -hmm. And it was really hard for me. But then I had to force myself to change the mindset. It's like every time I picked up the book, I had to consciously take, bring my awareness mm -hmm. to say that, okay, fine. You're, you're hating chemistry. You need to start loving the subject. Mm -hmm. okay, I mean, I, I know I sound like a complete nerd right now, but mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I had to bring myself. I had to physically train myself, even mm -hmm. though I hated the fact that, you know, I had to do this, but I'd physically mm -hmm. train myself to realize that I was having this mindset and then actively switch it mm -hmm. to the fact that I like chemistry. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what the um, monk Dandabani actually said as well, because he said that mind and awareness are two separate things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everyone believed that, you know, mind is just one single, one single entity, but then they realized that mind is just empty space with the different sectors like you know such as different emotions fear happiness or thrilled or whatever it is mm -hmm. and awareness is something that you have to move around the separate sectors mm -hmm. and to actively move that awareness from one sector to another actually mm -hmm. takes effort if you're going to consciously mm -hmm. bring that awareness from one part of your mind to another mm -hmm. it takes effort and that effort is what i would like to refer to as discipline okay i mean if I give a like kind of a very watered down version, you can still just go go to YouTube, watch TEDx video, uh, just type Dandabani, D A N D A P A N I. That's, yeah, I think that's spelling. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, I guess, I guess, I suppose, in you know, it could be a mix of both in that case. But I feel like in your case with the chemistry thing, you're probably, you know, it's like, it's like bodybuilders, right? When bodybuilders want to get big, like not now, but a long time ago, when bodybuilders want to get big and they're like, you know, I can't be asked to eat, but I'm, I will do anything to get big, but, you know, nothing is working. Then they tried steroids, you know, because they would try anything for stuff to work. Uh, I'm not saying that's what you did, <laughs> but I'm saying like in, in terms of chemistry, I think it was just a case of you were motivated to get into med school. Therefore, you're motivated to do well. And in the short term, that meant you needed to be motivated to 
figure out how to do well in chemistry. And in this case, <laughs> it's getting very meta now. In this case, it was a case of switching from discipline to motivation. Okay, so since we've established motivation is, is probably the better fuel out of the two for the same engine, that is you. Harish, why do you think we find it super hard to be motivated from your experience? Oh, that's a tough question, to be honest. Um, I believe one of the reasons why someone is so hard to be motivated is because, firstly, it's distractions. Mm -hmm. Because that's what my that's what that's my personal opinion. Because right now we live in this in a technological world. You know the usual cliche answer that oh yeah, you're surrounded by your laptops, your iPads, your PS4, your Xbox, and as I said, um, then I would like to go back to this Don Devani's uh, ex, uh, example as well, where you have trained yourself, you've trained your minds to be constantly distracted, that you've never been focused on one single, uh, f one single task. Mm -hmm. So I think it eventually comes down to the fact that you're surrounded by so many distractions that you actually can't stick true to a certain task. I think that's why people find it hard to be motivated because... If you find that discipline and motivation, I, I still stick to the... Well, I, I believe now motivation is uh, takes greater precedence mm -hmm. over discipline. But even if you have the motivation to uh, follow a certain task, mm -hmm. you need to bring that awareness to actually learn it co like consistently. I think that's what people lack right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you agree with me because let's say I'm learning the guitar. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I first picked up the guitar, I'm telling you, it was the most painful experience because you get calluses on your fingertips it's because right. you have to press down on the uh, strings hard. So that eventually it kind of becomes easy. But at the beginning stages, mm -hmm. it's so hard. And then even I myself realized that I was getting distracted because I'm like, okay, fine. Because to every single skill or every single task that you do from the scratch, there's a steep mm -hmm. learning curve. Okay? Yeah. And when, when people don't reach when they don't plateau at the uh, top of the learning curve mm -hmm. along those lines they start to give up I'm like okay fine this is where i get distracted so there's a whole mindset and the fact that they had, don't have that mental tenacity to take on such a task kicks in and that right. they get distracted and they fail at the task that's why i believe that people uh, don't have the motivation nowadays so basically what i'm trying to say is the fact that they lack people lack that mental discipline to stay focused on a single task is the reason why people are being unmotivated nowadays okay yeah no no i i, I think my my reasoning is kind of down the similar vein so naval ravikant who's the ceo of angelist right i was reading a couple of his tweets and some of his writings but i think essentially he talks a lot about this as well but i think one of the biggest things i think there's two things involved in why we're demotivated right number one is not being able to visualize how much we put ourselves back when we do something that we're not supposed to do and number two is the fact that we are surrounded by distractions right i.e sources of dopamine right so naval ravikant calls this the modern struggle okay and it is a struggle and i'm trying to explain this nowadays one of the cheapest things to get is dopamine Right. If you want dopamine, you can just go and eat some chocolate. Or you can play a video game. Or you can go on social media. And the really bad thing about it is, right, all of these, most of these sources are sort of weaponized. Okay. They're targeted to make you addicted. So one of the things that dopamine is released by is novelty. Okay. And social media is endless novelty. Okay. You can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. It's the next video after the next video after the next. And that just means that you're just on this constant dopamine drip. And this is why having self-awareness really helps because you start to kind of realize that and you kick yourself out of it. But nowadays, dopamine is very cheap. Okay. And because of that, people become addicted to social media, addicted to chocolate or whatever it is, right? People start to use chocolate as coping mechanisms, et cetera, et cetera. And Social media, because of its basically endless variation, it can replace learning entirely. You know, you can just continuously browse social media. Now, the problem with these addictions are it's fake work and it's fake play. Okay, so if you're in a video game, you know, you are just as motivated to get like the next armor or the next sword as you are, I don't know, to, to get to do the assignment, right? Except the assignment is real <laughs> and the and your sword is fake. <laughs> right? But you're probably doing a similar amount of work. And that's why you have to be really, really careful of these dopamine sources. So 
you have to kind of think before a long time ago when we were Neanderthals to get dopamine, you probably have to like hunt an animal or climb a tree or get fruits or whatever it is, right? Now I can just go to like Asda and buy like the Krispy Kreme and just eat two of 12 of them. Not that I've done that, but it's possible to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's possible to do that. Speak like someone they have done that actually. <laughs> yeah. So it's possible to do that and just be addicted and just be kept on this dopamine feed. And what that does is the best way I can explain it is sort of like, if you are a level one character, right, and you've done some sort of cheat codes, like like back in the GTA days, back in them days, you know, when you had these cheat codes that gives you infinite money, right? So let's say you did, you had a cheat code for life, or you had a cheat code in this video game, and you get like this, you're a level one, but you have all the rewards of like a maxed out character or a level hundred character. The thing is, at this point, if you have a level one mission, and the whole point of a level one mission is to get like rewards and, um, you know bounties or whatever it is right if you have a level one mission you will not be motivated to do that mission because you already have the rewards from a level 100 right so if you just stuff your face with donuts all day right you're not motivated to do the assignment because you already have a bunch of dopamine right and if you continue on the cycle you become desensitized to your dopamine you become very much you need a very high amount of dopamine to be to even be motivated and you see this in addicts and a bunch of other cases. So the first thing I think is that you need to monitor your dopamine sources because even Coke, right? Coca-Cola has no taste memory. Okay. What this means is that you can drink Coke at nine, you can drink Coke at 10 or 12 or 1 p.m. in the same day. And you would still get that same hit because you don't remember what it tastes like. And it can completely replace water. And I think the second thing is probably visualizing how how not doing things you're motivated to do set you back so for example a lot of people try and cut sugar out but they fail right a lot of people try and stop smoking but they also fail but i promise you if you had some sort of like portable x-ray that showed you how much your lung died every single time you inhaled a smoke i promise you <laughs> you'd have like <laughs> that's pretty extreme that's pretty extreme but i promise you if you could visualize how bad it is right? Because in terms of med school, for example, every, every single day that you don't work on something that you want to do, it could, it's, it's one step back, right? Every single, every single time you eat sugar, if you have some sort of glucose monitor showing you how it dipped and how your energy dipped, I promise you, you won't do it again because you can see what's going wrong. So I think it links back to this quote where it says, what gets measured gets managed, right? So be able to measure your progress, see how you are. So I think those are the two reasons why, um, why you get demotivated, just this a bunch of dopamine sources especially since have you heard of these dopamine fasts on youtube yeah i mean i see loads of videos i don't know it kind of seems impractical basically i think it involves people not doing anything for the day I and mean, when they do something they really feel excited i don't know i i can't stay still like that i, I have to do something <laughs> no legit no legit that that's literally literally what it is so basically they just they just sit there and do nothing all day and the whole point of it is that they reduce they resensitize them to doing dopamine you can see this first with fasting so i've been doing this 20 hour fast and then i eat for four hours of the day when you eat for that four hours like you can just have anything and it tastes great because you just haven't eaten for so long and you're so hungry, right? You can just have that. Or for example, when you're really thirsty and you have water, it's like the best feeling ever, right? So I think the whole idea of controlling and managing your dopamine sources has become popularized with these dopamine fasts. But yeah, it's a bit crazy, but I promise you there is some science to it. And and it's, I think, monitoring your dopamine sources and measuring and managing your progress so you can visualize it is really important. Um, but yeah. I mean, um. I would like to give another example of like, you know, visualizing your progress. So starting this podcast mm -hmm. was really, really tough. People think, you know, you can just buy a couple of mics, <laughs> you know, connect it to your laptop and, you know, just set up a domain. Yeah, you're sorted. I can tell you it is not that simple. The amount of frustration we had to go through. But every time we were so tired, we lacked energy. Me and Felix would be like, okay, calm down. Imagine what's in store for us. Do we love doing this? Yes. Then just show it in what you do. So every time we feel like, like uh, demotivated or we, whether we feel like, you know, there's a dip in energy, we just imagine the future 
And when we do that, we feel even more motivated. We bring the energy when we speak. So I think that's a good example of uh, what you said, like you have to visualize your progress. Oh yeah, 100%. I never had to once tap into discipline like to to work on this podcast or work on anything I like, which is pretty much everything I work on nowadays because I'm very, very sensitive to having to tap into discipline to do anything because I don't I didn't think you, you should because it just it's just a warning sign like you're doing something you don't want to do. One of the things, Harish, I wanted to ask you, right, was Mm -hmm. do you have any advice for anyone that's getting demotivated do you think there's anything that they can do oh damn um okay people who are getting demotivated so the first thing i would ask them to do preferably is to reassess their goals i think that is one of the main things i would like to ask them to do because if you're feeling demotivated is maybe because that is not whatever you're doing is not exactly a goal because you're not making any progress. Yeah, let's say, for example, you're learning about music production, yeah? But you have mm-hmm. no knowledge of music. Mm-hmm. Okay, you have no knowledge of music, but you want to learn music production. And so you're taking like a giant leap there. And mm-hmm. I see your end goal, mm-hmm. but you're getting demotivated because you're not making any progress because you don't have the prerequisite knowledge to actually produce music. So you've got to sit down and reassess your goals. So does it is it actually feasible to aim for something that big? Or do you have to break down that goal into smaller goals, like you know, such as okay, first I need to learn what is music. Yeah, I mean that's one of the biggest issues I've realized with the current generation. They set over ambitious goals. So every time someone is feeling demotivated, first thing, reassess your goals. I first of all, are your goals even achievable? Are they realistic? If they're not realistic, break it down. I'm not saying that whatever goals you have are unrealistic, mm. they're eventually achievable. That is my main key point. They are eventually achievable, but set realistic goals for the time being if you if you didn't know how to spell the alphabet but then you want to learn the word i don't know elephant first step you got to do is actually learn the alphabets from a to z that's what you got to do break Mm. down the goals as simple as possible set Mm. realistic goals for yourself i know it sounds really really cliche but i've been doing it with my life and he has been working create like some sort of rigid schedule system like you know where every Monday you reassess your goals, see whether you have made any progress towards your goals. So that's the only way you can actually keep track of whether you're moving towards your goal. And every time you see that you're making some progress, as Mm. Felix said, you need to visualize your progress. Once you see that you're actually making the progress, you'll feel even more motivated. So keep track of your progress so that that will eventually lead to your motivation. To summarize, there's just a few tips, a few takeaways, is that number one, identify your sources of dopamine, Okay, there's this whole new trend of detoxing. I don't know if you want to try that, but just identify your sources of dopamine and figure out whether you're addicted to something and make sure that you manage your source of dopamine so you're not just in like this constant dopamine drip um, of doing things that aren't real, right? If they're real, if it's it's passionate and if, if it's something that you're working on, then that's fine. That's, that's the ultimate goal to channel it that way. And I think the ways to help with it is to either use journals, okay, to track your progress like like harris said you know you know like in sawshank redemption where they draw draw a line on the wall every every day that they have left in prison not that but like you know use a book and (laughs) and that helps you visualize you know how much progress you're making and i think rat studies have shown you're most motivated when you see the outcome of if you do something versus if you don't do something so you're running away from something bad and also running towards something good so just visualize and identify sources of dopamine. I think those are all the tips I have. How about you? I would just like to add on to his point. So link into that dopamine point. So as I said, these dopamine comes from distractions around you, like, you know, eating, eating or even watching YouTube or anything. So mm-hmm. as I said, be aware of these distractions. As I said, bring your awareness, train your mind to bring the awareness from one area to the another. If you can sit in the cinema theater and watch Avengers Endgame for three freaking hours, I can tell you, you have the tenacity to do the assignment for three freaking hours as well. Yeah, no, no, I completely agree. I think anytime someone asks me about, you know, I want to do well in academics or I want to study or I want to work out, uh, give me some tips and advice because I'm just not motivated to do it. And whenever I hear that, I just get this idea that people like whoever's asking isn't serious about because serious enough about it because the thing is i think to most goals okay the only barrier you have is a mechanical barrier and that's only with a few goals like riding a bike someone needs to teach you how to ride a bike for example with losing weight if someone's like okay i need tips on losing weight 
I just see that as a sign that they may not be serious because nowadays any knowledge, the only thing stopping you from eating healthy and working out whatever is just knowledge. And nowadays because of the internet, knowledge is very, very dispersed and you can pretty much find anything you want online, right? And if you're super serious about it, if you're super motivated, you would have probably looked everything up on the internet before you even asked me and you'd be on your way and you'd be motivated. You'd be up every day doing whatever it is that you need to do to get to your goal. So yeah, I think... I think that pretty much covers everything I had about motivation. Do you have anything else, Harish, or are we good? No, I think this brings on to the next part of the podcast. It doesn't take that long, but we are introducing this new tradition where we offer one insight of the week from each one of us. So basically, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be related to the podcast or anything, but as far as it adds values to your life, we're we're just going to share with you. I think Felix will have the first go at it. All right, okay, cool. So... So this is a bit bit more niche, but for those of you who use a lot of apps, there's this new app called My Mind. They have the beta invites open, which basically means that you can put your email on their website and they'll invite you when they have a space because they're sort of slowly phasing it in. So what this does is that if you've ever seen a video or a mu- like a music video or a video or a blog or whatever it is, right? And you're like, oh, wow, this is so cool, but I want to read it later anywhere on the web, right? Uh, normally <laughs> what i would just do is play like oh that's that's a life-changing blog too bad i'll never remember it again but <laughs> if you have this if you use my mind there's like they just give you this plus button as a bookmark or like this extension it's also on your phones etc you just click on that and it will save the link and like the blog post and whatever onto their own app so that later when you do have time you can just come back to it and look at it and there are a couple of apps like this like instapaper and pocket but this one's better because when you add something, you don't need to do anything. It automatically tags what it is, kind of like how Google Photos tags people's faces and labels them for you. So like later on, like let's say a month later, you're like, oh, I want to look at this this dog video, right? You just type in dog and it will come up with all the videos that you tag. So it's super, super easy and I've been really enjoying it. So yeah, that's my insight of the week. What's yours, Harish? So basically, uh, I would like to have this, I would like to share this quote I'm not sure who said it, but I have it in one of my uh, books. Basically, it's if you have a task without a goal, it is mm-hmm. known as a hobby. Mm-hmm. If you have a goal without a task, it's called a dream. I think that's mm-hmm. something that resonates with me deeply because mm-hmm. I have these loads of dreams of like, okay, I want to fly a plane one day, for example. Or let's say I want to be an F1 race car driver, for example. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have the necessary tasks that to, to eventually achieve that goal. That means I don't have enough actionability to even make me reach that goal eventually because I think that's what most of the people lack nowadays. They would like to say, okay, I want to reach this goal, but they don't even take the first few steps to go towards that goal. I think that's what's lacking with the people nowadays. You need to have actionability to every single goal you have in your life. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I guess I'll finish off with one last quote is that, I don't know who said this again, but it was something along the lines of your mind is doing exactly what it wants to be doing right now. So for all the students out there procrastinating, if you're watching our podcast, you know, I think that's a productive procrastination in my opinion. But um, if you're procrastinating, just remember that your mind is doing exactly what it wants to do right now. That's the same reason why you can sit through three hours of Endgame and not move. Okay. And the same reason why you think you can't sit through three hours of working on an essay, right? And you need like a two hour break every 20 minutes. So your mind is doing exactly what it wants to do right now. So just figure out what your motivations are and optimize for it. But yeah, that's it. It's time for the outro, I guess. It's been a long one. Yeah, this was a pretty long podcast. This pretty much concludes our podcast. And for more podcasts, tune in to the 10th Men on Spotify and Red Circle. I know it's a new platform. It's called R-E-D-C-I-R-C-L-E. It'll be out on iTunes soon enough. It'll take a bit of time to be released on iTunes. And you can, as I said, you can find us on pretty much every popular platform. If you want to find us on Instagram, it's at at 10th men. It's all numerals, one zero. And if you want to find us on Twitter, it's at 10th underscore men. If you have any further queries, you can reach us through Gmail at official 10th men at gmail.com. 10th as in the numerals again and if you'd like to personally reach out to us you can do so through instagram for me at Prabust. i know it's a weird name p-r-a-b-o-o-s-t what about you felix yeah if you want to reach out 
uh, just find me at Felix Pajori or Felix underscore Pajori, some variation. You know, my name's quite rare, so you should be able to find me quite easily. And also, just to say, if you've got any comments or feedback, please do email us or please just tweet at me or Harish or the podcast page. And if you want any of it to be read out during one of our podcasts, please say so. And maybe we'll have some nice comments later on. I'd just like to point out that this is a listener-centric podcast. So if you have any discussions or any topic ideas that you would like to have you know, announced on this platform, mm-hmm. please do let us know. Until next time, keep safe. Tenth men out. out.